So now we're on Unit 5, Lesson 9, and we, we continue to talk about tables. We'll talk about them for the next few, few lessons, so hopefully you're comfortable with them and ready for them. Um, once again, we're talking about our tables, and we're making sure we understand our vocabulary. We've got our columns, like the buildings. We've got our rows, like the movie theater. And we're making sure that we understand that 84 means that on Tuesday, there were 84 people that rode the Ferris wheel. So once again, just go through the table and make sure that they understand it. So when you get to the homework, basically, look at the table. And before we start answering questions, let's just make sure we can identify what each cell stands for. So pick some out. Now, yesterday's, they really focused more on adding. So, um, you know, they would have said something like, how many people uh, rode the roller coaster, the Ferris wheel, and the bumper cars on Monday? And so, um, you know, there you're adding. Today we're talking about comparison problems. So the idea is we're using words like more, fewer, less, things like that. So for example, on Tuesday, there was 459 people that rode the roller coaster and 106 people rode the roller coaster on Wednesday. How many more people rode the roller coaster on Tuesday than on Wednesday? And so we're getting the idea of subtraction here. So comparison questions a lot of time. Comparing two days, one is usually going to be more than the other. And so we're trying to figure out how many more or how many less um, one day versus the other. So we call those comparison questions. So on your homework, you're going to start with that. You're going to, they're going to ask you the question. Now, if you'll notice, what I had just said was a whole lot of words. On Tuesday, there was 459 that rode the roller coaster. And on Wednesday, there was 106 that rode the roller coaster. How many more people rode the roller coaster on Tuesday than on Wednesday? And, you know, when you get to your homework, on your homework, um, you actually have to make up a comparison question, or not you, <laughs> your, your child has to make up a comparison question for each of the tables. And one thing that they really want to emphasize is that you have to give the complete question, problem and then ask the question. Um, so they really emphasized this in class while they were doing it. So you can't just say, how many more people rolled the roller coaster on Tuesday than on Wednesday? You need to give the complete. 459 rolled the roller coaster on Tuesday. 106 rolled on Wednesday. How many more rolled on Tuesday than Wednesday? So the complete problem is giving the details of how many wrote each day and then the rest of it is saying asking the question you want to know and using either words the how many more than or how many less than um, and the idea of that is someone could read the problem and not have to look at the table to figure out how to do the problem I could just read the problem no table involved whatsoever so um, that's kind of how you're writing comparison problems so just make sure that you're using the words more than less than how many more how many less how many fewer things like that to do the comparison question and that way we're doing subtraction and also make sure you give all the details the other thing we're doing is we're completing the table. So once again, when you're looking at your homework, you're going to have some blank spots on the table, and you have to figure out how to complete it. Before you can figure out what goes in there, you need to, of course, understand what's in the table. So once again, before you start, just make sure you know, what, what does this stand for? What do these say here? What do these say here? This says that on Monday, there's 122 loaves baked. This one says on Monday, they sold 38. And this one says how many loaves are left. Okay, now maybe they understand that, maybe they don't. Maybe they can read this. I mean, for you and me, hopefully, when we read this, we go, oh yeah, we're going to subtract. We're going to take this away from this, and that's what we get here. However, that doesn't mean that's what they're going to see. Or let's see, I look at these two and I see this is how many sold, this is how many they left. If I add them together, I get how many loaves were baked. That's not necessarily what your kid's going to see, and that's not what they understand. Sometimes this is just overwhelming looking at this big table or these big numbers. And so if you need to, break it down into smaller or get out some beans or get out, you know, if they have Legos or something that could stand for the loaves and make a simpler problem. Maybe you say, you know what, we bake 10 loaves. So then you get out 10 beans and you or beans or whatever you have, okay, get those out. And then you say, so we make our table, maybe extend on this table and say, hey, we made 10 loaves. Um, so 10 loaves are baked. So then all those 10, let's see if I can move them, all those 10, no, nope, darn it. All those 10, I should have drawn them in that part, okay? We sold four loaves. 
Okay, so then what do you do? If you saw loaves, they go away. So then you go and you take away 10 of those, shoo them out of there, get them out. And so then you ask, well, how many are left? And they can count and they get six. And then you say, okay, what kind of math did we do? Did we add or did we subtract? And they say, well, we took them away, so that means subtract. So that means I'm going to look at how many I baked and take away how many are sold. Because when you sell them, they get taken away. And so then they can say, okay, now if I go back here, I have 122. I'm taking away 38. So they can go ahead and do that subtraction and get their answer. Okay, and then same thing down here, you know, I have 10 loaves. Let's say I don't have the four, I have 10 loaves. I have six left, so how many does that mean we sold? And then they can go, well, that means we're going to have to take away the six to see how many are left. And so then they go and they, you know, figure out how many are sold, subtraction there. Okay, and so a lot of times if you get out manipulatives of beans, Legos, whatever you've got in the house, if you get out, I think I've used Cheerios before when I was helping someone, if you get those out and use them in an easier problem, like 10 and 4 and 6, um, it makes understanding these more complicated numbers easier. So don't be afraid to, to make up a problem like that for them when you're doing that. And then... You know, they ask you to come up with word problems on your homework. Once you fill in the table, you have to come up with the comparison problem. And so you're using the word fewer or more. It looks like number two, they want more. And number four, they want fewer. So, you know, following that, you're just, you know, kind of how, what can you say about this? Um, you know, how many more loaves did they make on Monday than they made on Tuesday? Of course, I didn't give enough information. You're supposed to give the whole information, right? So you're saying they baked 122 loaves on Monday. They baked 113 on Tuesday. How many more loaves did they bake on Monday than Tuesday? So that's just an example of something you could do for my table. Of course, you have your table to look at. Um, and it looks like that's pretty much everything in that part of the homework. The rest of it is just continue to write problems. Again, remember... Um, even, you know, if you didn't watch the other video or if you've forgotten, you know, writing problems really helps kids process in their brain what's going on. And so it's not, it feels like a daunting activity sometimes, especially if they're struggling with it, but it really is worth your time to sit down and write out a decent word problem and get them to talk about it. Even if they just tell you what to write, if that's the issue that they don't want to write it down, you know, they can tell you what to write and you write it down or you guys can discuss a word problem and then once you're done, they go back and write it down. It's up to you, but just, you know, it's a very worthwhile activity and something you really hope to get your child um, comfortable with doing because um, this isn't going to go away. It's not going away once they get out of the series. When they get to middle school, we're still doing it. When they get to high school, we're still doing it. So get them comfortable now. It's something that, it's one of those things that if you work at now, um, it's going to pay off in the end and become easier. So um, it's, it's worth the work. All right, good luck.